Clive Sinclair is a British scientist. <laughs> He's a bloke. He's a bloke that put a washing machine engine in a shoebox and asked us to drive to work in it, you know? Seriously. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, in the summer of Chernobyl, what was the principal press issue? Were they talking about nuclear power? Were they talking about ecology? No! They were talking about whether the future Duchess of York had a fat ass or not. That was what they wanted to know. Is she a fatty? Has she got a great big rattle floppy old cat flap? And will they be able to crowbar it through the doors of the Abbey on the big day? Right. So I thought, no. There was a time there was a time when the royals, you know, they, they held a place in our society. You could actually respect them. You know, I don't think Queen Victoria had to suffer speculation about the size of her arsehole, did she? No. I mean, imagine if the press had been around in the days when royals really made news, right? When they meant something. When they were giving each other syphilis and fighting each other and all that, you know? I mean, they made enough of the supposed tiff between Fergie and Di. What would they have made of the real row between Queen Elizabeth I and Mary? Oh, you Scottish bitch, giggled haughty, half-bald virgin Liz. <laughs> so, I thought, I'm not getting involved. I'm a lefty, I'm going to think about the world, I'm going to think about what matters, unemployment, Chernobyl, I'm not getting involved. But it's insidious, it draws you in. You can't help it, it keeps pulling you in. I mean, I'm in buskies, I'm going, I don't want to know, I'm not interested. But you're looking over people's shoulders thinking, oh, she's lost a bit of weight, she may be all right. <laughs> They might fit her into the door, I don't know. I mean, by the time it gets to the big day, I go. I'm in Trafalgar, I'm there, I'm shouting up at the balcony with all the other lovable Cockney cab drivers. There we go, apples and pears, apples and pears. Boiled beef and carrots, seagull, a lot of blacks moved in round here, Governor. Oh dear. <laughs> we're all down there, shouting up at the balcony, going, give us a kiss, Fergie and Andy, give us a kiss. I mean, where's the respect gone? Where's the mystique of royalty? I mean, where's it going to end? Give us a shag, that's what's coming. <laughs> They'll be out on the balcony, next lot, Harry or Wills, click the picture that charmed the world, wallop, Prince Harry. Slips it into some horse-faced Sloan Ranger. That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> Go on, fucking your highness. Sit on his face. We respect you. <laughs> now, there's always, there's always a bit of a division in the audience at this point. <laughs> I mean, there's those who are digging a routine, thinking, fair enough, a little bit of stand-up comedy, comment on it, etc. And there are those who are a little troubled because they came along because they quite liked the Black Adder, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I was, I was shocked because I thought the last episode was very sensitive when they went over the top, but I couldn't, I couldn't understand what he was saying about the princess, I really couldn't. So, I understand that we are treading on taboos here. It's almost like doing religion, you know? I mean, like, lots of people, they think they're atheists, but they never say they're atheists, do they? They say they're agnostics, because you don't want to tread on it, because you, you don't want to go too far. I mean, you think you're an atheist, but you say agnostic just in case, OK? You know, you want to die suddenly. Oh, fuck. Yes, I do exist. You see, I mean, for instance, I would, I would never say fuck in a church, you know? I mean, I don't think I really subscribe to organised religion, but I would never say fuck in a church. I'd have one, but I wouldn't say it. And I think that's an important difference. I mean, for some people, the royals are the real issue. You know, they think it's going too far to take the mick out of the royals. There's two reasons for this. The first is, they do a bloody difficult job. Don't you ever go at them, they do a bloody difficult job. You wouldn't want to do their job, they do a bloody difficult job. Well, I respect Charles, of course I do, but Fergie, 16 million holidays last year. I mean, it's not going to take it out of you, is it? Now, come on. <laughs> and the other reason you're not allowed to ever go at the royals is because uh, they can't answer back. Don't you ever go out the rules because they can't answer back. It's not fair. You can say what you like, but they can't answer back. Come on, they're on the telly in the papers every fucking day. They would say what they want if they wanted to. The Queen gets her own programme. Five minutes every Christmas day, she could say, can she? She's there, she could say, a Merry Christmas to one and all and the Commonwealth, and by the way, fuck off spitting image. She could do it. <laughs> I have a genuine sympathy for him, because I like some of them. I like Charles. I mean, he spoke up on the environment before most did. I mean, he's a bit of an old hippie, but I dig him. His brothers are bastards, but they're not going to be king. So basically, <laughs> we're OK. But why do the press keep going with this obsession? Whether Charles and Di have got a good marriage. I mean, Jesus, how could you have a good marriage under that kind of pressure? But 
I mean, I've got to admit it, they're not exactly well matched. I mean, she is a Sloan Ranger and he is a bit of a hippie. I mean, basically, I mean, she should have married Andrew Ridgely and he should have married Shirley Williams. It's quite clear to me. But, I mean, they couldn't exactly be worse put together if they'd met on blind date, could they? Now, be honest. Now, I've got, I know it's a bit of a link, but I've got to tell you, that is a weird programme, blind date. I mean, that's a strange one. I mean, what's it about? What is the basis of that programme? What is Scylla sell to London Weekend, eh? Basically, the programme is Scylla says to poor old Dorian, which one of these three grinning wally bozos would you least object to shagging? I mean, that's what she's... Because it's true, we're all sat there on our sofas going, oh, I wonder if they fucked, ooh. <laughs> ooh, she won't want to fuck him, no, he's too fat. He's... Oh, she's got the tall one, oh, he's got the skinny one, oh, they won't want to fuck her, eh? They're also, did they fuck when they went on their afternoon for two at McDonald's, you know? <laughs> in the original version in Australia. It's called Perfect Match. They get a whole week's holiday, so, you know, they can... Bur I mean, Scylla, oh, you lucky chooks. You've won a romantic candlelit dinner at McDonald's. Let's see how they got on. Well, it was all embarrassing, really, because he kept fishing the gherkin out, and it was really... <laughs> Shut up about the gherkin! Did you fuck him? I <laughs> just... <laughs> These kids, these, these lads, they're all there, good old British boys. Haircuts that even Kevin, Ke Kevin Keegan has finally discarded, you know. Little bomber jacket, little bit of jewellery. Good old British boys off Meister, follow the fucking bear. There, yeah, good old boys. And they've always got a cheeky question, haven't they? They've always got a cheeky question. No question there, a cheeky one. He asks a question, he says um, to the lads, says, the girl says, um, so what's your best feature? And the first lad goes, well, I think you'd need to be in private to find out. Oh, he's a bit of a cheeky one, isn't he? He's a lad. He's a boy. He's got a twinkle in his eye. He likes a bit of that. And he likes a bit of that. And why not? He's a good old British boy. Off my to follow the bear. Bomber jacket. Kevin King and haircut. He likes a bit of that. And why not? He's a good old lad. He's a good lad. We're having a giggle because he's a boy. He's a one. Silla's behind the wall. She goes, oh, he's a lad, isn't he? He's a one. He's a chuck. He's a wanker, Silla. We can all see that. See, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, all those photos of, of, of Di in her bikini and things, I mean, not only do I believe that that is a, an outrageous intrusion, I mean, you know, seriously, you can't, whether you've got the institution or not, and totally sexist, because what we're actually saying is, oh, look at that, look at Di. Oh, look, we see her tummy. Oh, imagine if we could see her tits, look at that. <laughs> and that's what they're bloody saying, they're saying, happy holiday, which translates as, look at those, eh, fuck, you know. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I can't stand on the beach is photographers, that must be Di's problem. But for me, every time you go on broad, summer's coming, I'm going to go on broad, I'll have a little holiday on the beaches. There's one phenomenon that seems to have taken over the beaches of the world, particularly the beaches of Europe, and I consider it to be outrageous. I mean, I've I got to tell you what it is like. It is nudie sunbathing. I cannot get my mouth nudie sunbathing. The minute the sun comes out, all the horrible old tackle flops out, everybody getting cancer under the sun. It's revolting. I mean, we should all cover I can't... I mean, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, who wants to lie on a beach all day watching a pale knob turn pink? I mean, really? <laughs> now, a lot more women nudie sunbathe than men. And there are two good reasons for this. The first one is, lads, that your average knob... And believe me, they're all average. <laughs> yeah, mine's, mine's fucking enormous. <laughs> ah! Suddenly the politics is gone and Benny Hill appears on the stage! <laughs> Recognise the devil in us all. Ladies and gentlemen, your average knob does not look good. Be honest, lads, it is not the most attractive part of the anatomy, is it, eh? It might feel very nice, but it looks fucking horrible, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> Could you honestly stare yours in its one eye and say, you're a pretty little knob, you really are. I love you, you're my best feature. No. Bad design. Proves God's a woman, you see? She's sat in heaven on the first day of creation. There's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and Adam's having a laugh at Eve's tits because that's apparently one of the great jokes. You've only got to watch the two Ronnies or Benny Hill tits. Oh, wouldn't get me in those the pound, eh, 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 eh? No wonder they built the extension, eh, eh? Wish I were her doctor, eh? I mean, all these laughs about women's tits. I don't know how women get up in the morning. They must piss themselves in front of the bathroom mirror. Fucking hell, look at them. God, I wouldn't get many of these the pound, would I? Cool, I wish I was my doctor. These are fucking funny, eh? <laughs> I guess I know why a lot of women don't make it to the top in the country. They're all sat at home laughing at their tits, aren't they? You know, I'm happy here with these. I don't need any so. Old Adam's having a laugh. Having a laugh, ha-ha, <laughs> look at him, look at him, you stuck with him jiggling around in front of you. God thinks, right, I'll stitch that bastard off. What up, Adam, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'll tell you 
you what it is. God was a bit tired after seven days of creation. She's been down to Kentucky Celestial Fried Chicken. There's that last bit in a box that you just can't do. What the fuck is that? Just can't work it out. I know, bang, I'll stick it on, Adam. Kentucky Fried Dick, we're nibbling it today. It's the truth. So, 